Hello and welcome to another edition of the Golden Gloves Chat Show. Sitting with me is Kevin Larina at the Peter Smith Gym. Kevin, welcome. Thanks, Pete. Uh, nice to chat to you yes. again. Uh, obviously, we have many chats. Uh, Kevin, I want to talk to you about the whole um, heavyweight division at the moment. And then we'll talk about your big fight with Marius Wach, which has been signed. Fantastic stuff for the IBF Intercontinental title. And that's on the 17th of September at Empress Palace on a big Golden Gloves Show. But let's talk, first talk about like the, the, the state of, of heavyweight boxing. The fans would love to get uh, your opinion as, as a former IBA Cruiserweight champion of the world and now an undefeated heavyweight rated now number 27 in the world in the heavyweight division. Uh, let's talk Tyson Fury's last fight. Um, he, he, he won and, and he stopped Dylan White. What do you think of Tyson Fury? Tyson Fury is a, a great fighter. Um, he's come back from a lot as well. I think people need to realize he went through a lot of mental challenges and that, and that, that to overcome is just as big as his victories in the ring. Mm -hmm. As a boxer, he's, he's a crafty fighter. He's phenomenal. He's a big man. He's got power when he wants to turn it up. And I think he'll be a very hard man to beat for a long time. How long he's going to be around, I don't know. Well, apparently he says he doesn't want to fight anymore, but I think, uh, you know, man, money does talk. I see he's talking billions, but I think they'll give him a lot of money to fight. What do you think? Ah, for sure. He's very charismatic. Um, he brings a lot to the table when he fights. He's got a lot for the promoters to sell and to share. But besides all that bravado and the talking, he can back it up in the ring. And yeah. he's doing really well. So he's the WBC world champion. Whether he retains it, relinquishes it, who knows? But uh, he's a good competitor. He's a good fighter. And he's also a big man. Yeah, so I think that's the biggest attribute. He's big and good. Yes, absolutely. I agree with you. And I, I suppose in boxing, you, you've got to be a bit arrogant because you've got to believe you're the best. Mm. And if you can back your arrogance, like is it Tyson Fury does, like Mayweather did, then, then it's fine. You know, then, then be arrogant as long as when you get in the ring, you can back it, which they can. And then, of course, the, the big fight, um, that would be a big fight if Usak, fought, when Usak fights Joshua now mm. in, in Saudi, in, when is it, on the 20th of August? Yes. If Joshua can beat Usak, which is going to be a tough task, that would be a big fight for for Tyson Fury to make a comeback. Who do you think wins a fight with Anthony Joshua and Alessandro Usak? I've been trying to play so many roles over my head. I think it's a very 50-50 fight. You know, Usak did outbox Joshua the first attempt. I feel Joshua did fight the wrong fight. I don't think we're going to see the same Anthony Joshua coming into this rematch. He will turn it up. I think he's going to try go for Usak and bully the smaller man. But Usyk is a crafty fighter and he's also strong too, you know. Yes, everyone says he's a cruiserweight that's come up, but he's a big cruiserweight and people forget that sometimes muscles don't win fights and I think it's going to be a hard fight for both guys. Anthony Joshua, is a, he's a strong guy, he's got a lot of power, he's got great athleticism and Usyk as well, he's a strong guy, good boxing ability, great athleticism. So it's a 50-50 fight. I think uh, if Joshua can hurt Usyk or put him on the back foot, Joshua can get the victory. But if Usyk gets his way and starts to find his rhythm early on, it will be a hard night for Joshua yet again. And of course, Evander Holyfield, who can never forget, came from cruiserweights, yeah. one of the greatest cruiserweights, and became one of the greatest heavyweights. So. One of my favorite fighters, Evander Holyfield. Crafty, in and out type of guy, packed enough power to want to slow the heavyweights down and threw a lot of punches in bunches. Some, a style that I try to mimic myself to. Um, obviously, there's Mark Tyson because I'm a shorter guy, like in the pocket, but. Yeah. You know, you've got to take a bit of everybody, a bit of everybody, a bit of you, a bit of Evander Holyfield, a bit of Mark Tyson, and, and form your own style, but take a bit from the greats, and, and that's how you, you get better and you learn. Yeah, thank you. Kevin, well, let's talk about your big fight now. You're 27 and 1. Marius Wach from Poland is 36 and 8. He's a big man, 6 foot 8. Um, you didn't have a problem last time out with the big man, Bogdan Dina. You, you brought him straight down to the canvas. <laughs> um, big fight for you once again, of course. You want to win, you need to win, uh, you're going to win. And it's for the IBA Intercontinental title. And as we said, uh, you could become the number, you do, you would become the, the mandatory challenger. And, and should Usak win, uh, I believe he, he might give up that IBA title. There's a good chance of that. Yeah. And then you would be mandatory challenger for, for, for the IBA heavyweight title. So every fight's massive for you. Talk to us about this fight with Mario Svart. From a business point of view, I think it's, it's better for me if Usyk wins because Anthony Joshua has paid the sanctioning fees for the IBO. Usyk hasn't, which means in the event that Usyk wins, the IBO belt becomes vacant. I beat Morris Vach. I become the mandatory challenger for that world title. But I cannot overlook the task ahead of me on the 17th of September. So I need to focus on what lies ahead. And I've got a tough fight on my hands. Uh, Morris Vach, big man. He's strong. 
He's a legitimate heavyweight. He's fought for the unification, the WBA, WBO, RBO, RBF against Vladimir Klitschko. He's fought Dylan White in 2019. When I announced the fight with Marius Vach, the boxing world took notice. David Hay commented, Dylan White commented on my post. I said, good luck, bro. It's a tough fight for you. You beat this guy. You've got a real future in heavyweights. So it says a lot. It's a great opponent for me. Not if, it's when I beat him because I know what I have to do to win. He's a tough competitor. I respect him. This is heavyweight boxing. Anything can happen. But I'm a smart fighter and I know what I have to do to beat him. And uh, I'm going there for the knockout. I've been telling you that every single time. I'm there for the excitement, but not stupid. I'm not there to be 50-50 in the pocket, one for one. I'm there to put on a mask class, use my feet, use my power, use my speed and bring it all together and, and have a great victory again. And like I said, Morris Vuck's a tough competitor. I'm training now, I've got 13 weeks to go, putting in two sessions a day, sometimes one until I need to ramp it up. But my consistency and the skill set that I bring to the table is going to be too much for Morris Vuck. Well, luckily we, we spoke off air. Um, like I've, I've liked exactly what you're doing in the last couple of years in boxing, uh, modeling yourself in that Mike Tyson peekaboo style. Defense is so important. You saw that even with the fight with Raw Knapp, he was, he was more defensive against Taysa this time around, and it helped him get through. So defense is important, it gives you longevity. And your defense is very good, and you move now, your head nice side to side. But I want to talk to you about your, your, your punching power. It looks like your punching power has improved a lot. I mean, your last, last four fights are all by KO. Do you feel you're a bigger puncher now? Well, you're obviously 10 kilograms heavier. <laughs> you're a big guy now. Are you eating harder? I wouldn't, I don't know, to be honest. Um, I can't blow my own trumpet like that. I just feel I'm more experienced now. My timing is better. Peter's worked a long time with me, 11 years, to perfect my skills, my timing, my precision. Obviously, I think I'm a naturally a very strong guy, but boxing, as you always say, is not like bodybuilding. It's not about who's the strongest. So the whip and the snap and the punch is there. Speed. Speed kills and... I got killer instinct. Yeah. I think that's the big difference. You know, I'm, I'm no longer there to play it safe in my box, to be fair. There to I, I'm there to out. take the man out because heavyweight boxing, one punch turns the fight around, as you know. And when you got a man in trouble, it's put him away. And I just feel, thank you for the compliment. Yeah, the, the care percentage has increased, but I just think it's just all come together. People forget I haven't had an amateur background, but I'm pretty consistent in what I do. Got a good conditioning coach, a strength and conditioning coach who understands my dynamics with boxing. Peter Smith is a great boxing trainer. He's walked the walk. He understands the dynamics and what it takes for me to get to the next level. Um, but punching power was like one variable of the fight. I mean, you can stop a guy by wearing him down. You can stop a guy by landing him clean. My last fight, I landed that guy some really hard shots, wobbled him a bit, but the clean shot dropped him. Mm. And it's that, that natural shot that comes. I think you, you prepare for that and you envision that and you visualize. I'm very big on that. But thank you for the compliment, Brian, but I'm not there to blow my own trumpet. I sure. think I'm there to... No, well, the, the proof's in the pudding. I mean, you, you've knocked out your last... Yeah, four he's a legitimate heavyweight. I'm, I'm not there to chug in victories, unanimous decision victories. I got that at Cruiserweight. I've gone 12 rounds, I think, nine times. So I'm tired of going 12 rounds. And speed, like you said, yeah, speed kills. I'm, yeah, there, I'm there to put on a performance. I'm not talking about cars now, because we don't want yeah, to yeah. kill there. But we're talking in, in the fight game, it does. You know, you look at Mike Tyson, it was a look, great hand speed day, knocked the guys out. And, and you seem to have carried your speed over from the cruiserweight division. I think that was the biggest thing. I said to myself, or Peter said, like, we're going to go up. And what we are going to lack in stature and size, we're going to equalize in speed. speed. Correct. And with speed comes power. Yes, absolutely. Because I've seen a lot of big, strong men, like they hit hard, they fold the bag in half. But when you see that punch coming, the mind you can process that punch is coming. It's, it's too not going to it's too slow. Yeah. It's that boom. That, yeah. that hook you didn't see, hey, where'd that come from? Yeah, exactly. I think, uh, like Marius Vach is a tough competitor. He's, you saw how he absorbed Klitschko's power. You saw how he absorbed Dillian White's power. Let's see what he does with a fast, small cruiserweight. Like they said, Kevin well, Reynolds. That's a small as well. <laughs> well, compared to him. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, he's six foot eight. Yeah, height wise, yeah. Yeah, I think, um, like Bogdan Dinu, before the fight, so you had the interviews with him. Kevin must realize I'm a real heavyweight. I fought amateurs, been with Usyk. I don't care. Yeah. I said, I don't care. I'm going to knock you out. Yeah. And that doesn't matter anymore. Yeah. You, you, your past, out, so. you know, you stop living in your past. I said, I'm going to knock you out. And in all these pre-fight interviews, Kevin's a cruiserweight. He's coming up to heavyweight. I'm a legitimate heavyweight. I fought this one. I fought that one. I fought Usyk in amateurs. You know, 
I don't care. I know what I have to do to win. This is the professional ranks and I'm going for the knockout and I, and I gave it to him. And after the fight, he says, well done. I didn't expect that. So it's nice to feel that they don't yeah, expect sure. it from you. So that element of surprise, I think is going to catch a lot of heavyweights internationally. We, we look at international guys locally, obviously there's nothing happening here, but internationally for me, like you said, the world title yeah. shot looms. And, and that was great to hear that if Usak vacates the belt, it becomes exactly. vacant, I get a mandatory shot being the cruiserweight champion before. It's just another step in the right direction and our time will come. Been patient now 11 years and we've got a great team, Rodney Berman, Supersport, you, Peter. We've got a good team behind me and, and I'm very content with where I am. <laughs> exactly, yeah, and I'm, I'm content where I am, Brian. Like, no, I think good, good people job. just try to get ahead of themselves too much mm -hmm. in, 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 in all aspects of life and in sport. And I'm just content where I am. My time will come, but in the moment, I'm doing what I need to do. And once the moment flourishes and my time comes, the world already knows who I am. That's yeah, evident. Sure. So they, they, they talk about it. But when I get the shot at the world title, we keep many South Africans with their mouth quiet. Thanks, Kevin. Thank you. Uh, it's uh, the first of many interviews we're still going to have for this big fight, which is happening in a little over two and a half months against Marius Vach from Poland. So thank you, thank you for you the much. interview once again, thank Kevin. You. For my IBO Cruiserweight Champion of the World and undefeated as a heavyweight. Fights on the 17th of September at Empress Palace, your Mecca of Boxing on a Golden Glacier. Thank you for watching.